So, you ready to get into Hosea? Yeah, let's, let's do some Hosea. Cool. I did my homework. Oh, good. How did you do? I, I did I did all right, I think. All right, cool. Uh, Leon got sent a... me a text. Oh, he is not. I don't think he's going to be here. That's, That's okay. Um, all right, let me know when you start it, and here. you'll do the intro. Okay, so. Hello, and welcome to... Theology talk. I guess that's what we're calling this, right? We decided yeah. that last week. Um, Did we get the sound issue sorted out? I don't know. I, I turned up the desktop. It was mostly Leon's sound that was the worst. Oh, I'm sorry. Fox. Ugh. Mr. Fox. Yeah. So, like, he was doing all of the reading, so you can barely hear any of the actual Bible. <laughs> um. But, so here we are. Um, but I, Hopefully I, we said good things, too. Yeah, I, th I, I think we maybe did. I don't know. I haven't checked the viewership on the YouTubes. Uh, there's one, and it was me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, I have a feeling this isn't going to uh, fill our coffers in any means. That's significant. Oh, that's fine. It was never meant to be that. Um, yeah, so, I so I've turned up the desktop side of things, and you were never an issue with – Cool. Sound anyway. Now we're all going to sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, so today, we're going to blast through the rest of Hosea. Right? We did the first part. And, and every commentary that I've read um, has, has always split Hosea into these two sections. Uh, oh, perfect. Uh, 1 through 3 and 4 through 14. It's well. Like, it's like the, the family of Hosea and his, his issues with his adulterous wife. And then... 4 through 14 is really brings it into uh, God and Israel. And there, there was okay. some pretty good stuff here. Uh, my, my notes kind of fall off towards the end. I was taking really good notes at the beginning, and then... You know what? That's so okay. Much. Mine did... Mine got significantly less also. Okay. Um, but here's the thing, is you... I really like the bird's eye view, like we were talking about of scripture, because I'm going to probably bring up some things and only read some things that are really significant, and then maybe you read some of the stuff. We we still have to pay attention to the scripture, I say, with yeah. the bird's eye view, because yeah. we're going to have to call into some things because we're skipping over some things. Yeah. We're going to have to go through, and sometimes we may end up reading a chapter again. Who right, knows? right. So how, how do you want to do this? Do you want to read all Did you chapters? find – no, I, okay. I don't. I okay. want to – did you find any uh, any verses or phrases that stuck out to you or that were that are just famous within the chapter? That's okay. the thing that I always look for when I'm doing a bird's eye view. I read it myself, and then I find things that stuck out to me this reading through. You always read it through again. Mm -hmm. And then I also look for popular things, things that I think I've heard before or that many people may have heard before. Okay. So – so we'll just we'll just read it uh, one chapter and then talk about our, our highlights, I guess. And yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, are we gonna read it? Why Why wouldn't we read it? I don't know, cause I I read it and I have things underlined. I'm ready. Okay. I think we should read it for any any viewers who might be watching. You mean viewer? <laughs> 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 well, there, there, but, it's it's gonna go up on onto the YouTube, so there might be somebody in the future. Well, um, I'm I mean, you know, okay. it's I've I read it, and I want to know what you think is important, so I can cast judgment on that. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> that's fair. Um, all right, so chapter four. Cool. Then, what do you want to start with? Well, so the first thing that I did, and I didn't do this for any other chapters, was I just kind of wrote like a paragraph or, or – well, it's not a sentence. It's definitely longer than a sentence of what okay. I think the chapter is just about. Wow. Nice. Tell me. So, so here's what I wrote down. So verses 1 through 10 is, uh, listen, y'all have forgotten me. Because of this, bad things are happening. You can't argue – because you don't have any knowledge, uh, and yeah. punishment is coming because of all the bad things that are happening. Yeah. Uh, and then you've forsaken the Lord, which is willful ignorance. So this this um, knowledge that you don't have is your own fault. Yeah. Okay. There's that, and then twelve through nineteen, it gets a little less detailed. Idolatry is bad. 
Yeah. And then in f- 15 was really interesting. He says, don't let Judah follow Israel. Ooh, I missed that. Don't let yeah. Judah be- I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna. Though you play the horror, Israel, do not let Judah become guilty. Let me get there on the screen. Here it is. Boy, I'm starting to wonder if I even. Guilty. I have the Holman Christian Standard Bible, and it kind of, um, it says things way differently than most Bibles. Um, it says, Israel, if you act promiscuously, don't let Judah become guilty. Uh, and I, I think you can read the same thing in there. But the reason I trust this translation is because of how it uh, does John 3.16. I really feel like it tries to get the best possible modern reading with the original intent behind it. And it, it, you know how What's how John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm-hmm. right? And uh, a lot of people think that, uh, that the for God so loved the world – that it's talking about an amount that God loved the world. But really, uh, the, the more accurate translation, and that's how the Holman Christian Standard Bible seems to translate, is for God loved the world in this way. So it's not qualitative or quantitative. It's descriptive. And so uh, in, in commentaries I read on John 3.16, that seems to be the more accurate way to translate John 3.16 mm-hmm. is, is, is the um, – qualitative way not the quantitative the uh so so i trust this translation but it does say things way differently than than yours all that to say christian standard bible yeah so do you want me to to i i have about nine underlines because it really got me to like this kind of thing gets me to marking in my bible Sure. And you made a lot of great points. I like that. But, um, <laughs> well, I mean, it's – it's I I saw all that too. Um, I, I thought it's really interesting in, in the chapter 4, verse 4, and chapter 5, he's not – he seems to be specifically talking to prophets and priests. Uh, we're not talking uh, – there's – and and starting after mm, – is it – 12 it's it's also starting after 12 then he moves on to the people so from verses 1 through 11 it seems to be at least a lot of people uh that he's railing against right now god is railing against are the prophets and priests and then it says in in verse 6 my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge i will reject you from serving as my priest since you have forgotten the law of your god i will also forget your sons I thought that was extremely interesting. Which one was um, that? Uh, cha- uh, verse 6 of chapter 4. I want to know what yours says because mine's uh, probably wonky. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Yeah, so that seems pretty close on there. Uh, and the thing is, I think it's very interesting at the end of that verse – I will also forget your sons. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, man. Sometimes I wonder about things yeah, so... of of future generation consequences for the sins of the father. You know, I kind of harp on that a lot, and and it makes me very accountable to think about if if and when I have my own children. Yeah, is like, isn't it somewhere? It says like the the sins of the father will be reaped on the second and third generations, um, but the sins of the righteous person will last for a thousand generations or something. I don't know. I gotta look that up. That's, that's somewhere. That's, hold on. Sins of the what? What did you say? Sins of the. Uh, it doesn't sound like Ezekiel. Uh, in fact, um, uh, try Leviticus twenty six forty through forty two. But uh, the I know that in Ezekiel though they were uh, whining and moaning about how you know why are we in Babylon? We shouldn't be here. You're punishing us for the sins of our fathers, and yet then God goes and shows uh, uh, Ezekiel. It's Exodus. Um, it's Exodus. Okay. Exodus. Where is that? Uh, it's chapter 20. 
Genesis chapter 20. Oh, you mean the Ten Commandments? <laughs> Let's see here. Man, all over Earth. All... I'm going to need a verse, unfortunately. Yeah, let me, let me find it. Let me do that. righteous part so probably four. Oh, i will show my thought love to thousands of generations mm -hmm. obey my laws uh so it's like what you said but the opposite the 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 righteous will be blessed yeah, for so, a thousand so, generations so five you shall not bow down to them or worship them for i the lord am a jealous god punishing children for the iniquity of the parents to the third and fourth generations of those who reject right. me but showing steadfast love to the thousands thousands generations of those who love me and keep my commandments the question is which one are we <laughs> you know um sometimes i i really get uh sad because i see people who i perceive as good parents and they have just lousy kids um their kids <laughs> didn't well i, I mean yeah. honestly yeah. i get really disturbed by that because i'm like i want to raise my kids christian i want them to be knowledgeable followers of god and i don't want them to hate me for wanting that for them yeah. and i know so many kids who are um they they're resentful of how much their fathers just crammed it down their throat and i'm wondering is there a measure is there a point of consistency where i can be a christian father pastor to my kid while also the kid not grow up and freaking hate who god is because i just wouldn't let it go and i don't want to be one where because i have forgotten the lord or or for some reason i didn't go about caring for my kid in the right way that pleases the lord right R remind you know. me when we're done and I'll, I'll send you another fist podcast where he and his wife okay. talk about parenting it's pretty good well, I only care if he's done a good job. I think it's a good job. You can make your own. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, you're saying he has a 22-year-old who regularly goes to church, is in well, scriptures, and who loves the Lord and, and serves him. He's got like five kids, and they're uh, – I don't know what their ages are. Uh, it might be four kids. I don't know. But it, it sounds like they're, they're doing their best. So – we hope to all be doing yeah. our best, g but g g give it a listen. You can take their advice yeah. or not. It's up to you. Sure. Just remind me. Thank um, you. But the uh, the thing you're saying about priests, right? That yeah. It's, it's about priests. In the beginning of chapter five, he has three divisions okay. for the impending judgments. Right. Chapter five one is here, O priest. Let's see. Okay. Hear this, O yep. priest. Give heed, house of Israel, and listen, house of the king. Okay. So you have the priests, you have Israel, which are the ten tribes, right? And the king is Judah, and he's probably, I don't know, Benjamin is somewhere in Israel, maybe. But the house of the king is the house of Judah. Israel is the rest of the people of Israel, and then priests are the priests. Yeah. Right. So I don't know if there, if that's if that's an important thing or not. It probably is. That's a really cool point that I t totally missed and now have marked. So <laughs> that's really neat. I like that. Um, yeah, and just, something I had noticed is just uh, verse 9, same judgment will happen to both people and priests. I will punish them for their ways. Is this in 5 and uh, 4? Uh, this is in 4, back okay, in 4. Okay. Sorry. Uh, verse 9. And then 14 – I will not punish your daughters. Um, so he's doing a bunch of I wills, I wills, I will not. And that's cool. Right. Um, because the men themselves have been so bloody bad. Right. And, and so this, bad. this is an interesting thing that kind of gets to our, our free discussion, right? Yeah. The, uh, I, the daughters play the whore, but I'm not going to punish them because the men have gone aside. Oh, yeah. Right, so yeah, absolutely. It, it, there's there's a gender role thing here that the the guys are supposed to be the leaders of their families and the pastors of their families, and to yeah. teach their their families the the ways of, of of God and religion, and and that goes into the the, the muscular Christianity that you were lamenting. Hey hey hey, has, let's has let's not uh, uh yeah I'm talking about. <laughs> Men and mission. I was not talking about any weird machismo. 
Uh, let's not turn it to something weird here. Uh, <laughs> no, I totally understand though. Mm -hmm. So that that's sure. that's interesting. No, and that's an awesome catch. I didn't even catch that. So mm -hmm. wait, I, I was just something I. I was actually going to bring up a different subject matter with that. So this is what I like to do. I like to read the scriptures, and then I like to think about them both uh, historically and contemporarily. Um, and I, I know that you and Leon definitely go in, this, in the, the way of God does not cause things that we consider evil. And yet um, God can have wrath, and we can't, not without being bad. God can have anger, but we can't. The, in James, it says the, the anger of man is will not bring about the kingdom of God or is not good within the kingdom of God. Uh, and so God can do these things, and it's not inconsistent within his character to be able to do things man cannot and evil. Mm -hmm. If I were to go and slaughter 20 children, evil. If yeah. God does it, he probably has a reason. Um, and I'm just wondering – because we, we, we protect ourselves really well with the saying, God does not cause what we consider evil. He, uh, and I know philosophers from years uh, back have done this. I'm, I'm dealing with over 2,000 years of history probably, but 4,000 years of history. But, but the question is, can we put God in a box that way when God himself in his word talks about he will do something. He hates something. He does these things that make us uncomfortable as Christians. And where do we, where do we, because like, I will punish them for their ways. I will, I, I tried to kind of underline anytime he started a new, I will, uh, I will tear them to pieces. I will carry them off. These are God acting in a very specific and verbish way. He's, a, he's not just talking about how, oh, I will allow them to have evil come upon them because I am God and what I consider evil, you also consider evil. And when you consider something evil, how dare I have a different definition, you know? Well, yeah, and I, I don't think that this is is right, evil necessarily. It's 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 a punishment, right? When you when you have a, yeah. a, a kid who throws a soccer ball through your window Right. Is is the punishment of that an evil thing? When, when that no, 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 no. But I'm not talking about this necessarily. I mean, it sure. brought it to mind. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so to, to take it even further then, like the yeah. angel of death who wreaks destruction Ooh. against the firstborn of Egypt. You took it a mile from is, All right, is, I like this. Is, is sent by God. Right? Yeah. It's his angel. The angels that yeah. destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah were God's angels. Yeah. Right. The 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 evil spirit that that um, afflicted David afflicted it's Saul, it afflicted Saul. Or Saul also was but... sent. He sent a demon into Saul's life. Yeah. As a punishment. So. Yeah. yeah. I, the, my thing is, are we allowed to be? So, why can't we be – it's not more of are we allowed. Of course we're allowed. But why can't we be more okay with incongruities like that? I, I, don't I feel like we as Christians are really – well, they're not incongruities. Okay, bad choice of words. <laughs> paradoxes. Let's go with paradoxes. Yeah, and we shouldn't. Um, God is paradoxical. Yeah. I'm okay worshiping a God I do not fully understand or who does not follow my moral code specifically. Right. I feel like that's asking a lot for a holy God – to follow my particular moral code. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't need to. But I just thank God that he died for me in Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that he rose again to prove it. But inside of that context, I'm okay with some of the peculiarities mm -hmm. that lay within. You gave better examples than I did. <laughs> but I wonder what Leon would say about that. Because um, – in apologetics, you have to be very careful with those kind of answers. And I, I don't, uh, th I don't think that Leon, representing Roman Catholicism as a whole, would have an issue with with that kind of a paradox. They they would say uh, these these are not evil things. They are they are the just punishments of sin that God is wreaking. Right. All of right. this. That's what the realist says, but we do not live in a real world. <laughs> with real emotion. <laughs> so yeah, and, and 
it's the same question that comes up when somebody reads the Old Testament for the first time and, you know, God tells Joshua to go into Canaan and murder everyone. Well, murder is the wrong yeah. word. Kill all the people, the women, the children, yeah. the animals, yeah. everything. And the answer to that is is that is the what all of us deserve. We all yeah. deserve to be killed. And by God. By God. <laughs> and, and to Whoever be he calls to do it. Totally yeah. honest, God is killing all of us as we speak. The, the, the entropy that affects our lives is God killing us because of our sin. Yeah. Yeah. Sin cannot stand in his presence. No. Yeah. And, and uh, the, the that's wages, a really cool cosmic way of looking at that. The, the wages of sin is death. God cannot have sin in in his view, and so he kills us. So we are all being killed by God. Yeah, yeah. dude, harsh, brutal, but uh, truth. Mm. It's cool. Thank you for giving me that. <laughs> that was cool, man. <laughs> uh, you have practiced that one better than I have. Oh, I still have to um. one up. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, what's uh, something else that caught you in verse uh, chapter four? Anything uh, else? That's all I had in four. Cool. Uh, five was a good one. Um, Ephraim. Ephraim? Uh, yeah, Ephraim. Let's call him that. Uh, sorry about that, Ephraim. I... <laughs> but he starts talking about him in chapter four in, in verse 17, I believe. And he continues this for literally the rest of the book. Yeah. And I got to be honest, I did not look up Ephraim up. Did you I did look up bit. his significance? So He's one of the twelve tribes. One of the twelve tribes. Um, yeah. Is he the I, oldest? I, I, no, Reuben was the oldest. Reuben was the it oldest. It looked up Ephraim. It looked up a lot of other ones, but not him. Okay, this would probably be beneficial for us reading the rest of the chapter. I know. Uh, second son of Joseph. Okay. Uh, with his. Oh, so Joseph. This isn't. This isn't one of one of Jacob's sons. E- Ephraim, oh. Ephraim and Manasseh were Joseph's sons by his Egyptian wife. Well, I'll be. Mm-hmm. All right. So, so. Boy, I was wrong. Kind of a f- uh, foreigner, a little bit. Yeah. Born in Egypt before the arrival of the children of Israel from Canaan. Wow. Um, so after you know, it's kind of funny. I kind of uh, forget about Joseph. He seems kind of like the only reason he's in the Bible sometimes uh, is to get the people of Israel to Egypt, which, let's face it, that's the pinnacle moment of right. the so, Israelite people. But he kind of seems like he's almost non sequitur sometimes. Well, he's he's – Easily the most perfect type of Christ in the Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and because he he literally saves the line uh, through his work in Egypt, protecting the world from the famine, he gets the double. His line gets the double um, blessing of having two yeah. tribes out of himself. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ephraim and Manasseh. Right, so they are part of the. They are part of the twelve. That's what I through, thought. Through okay. Joshua, and and their his two sons get their own tribes because of. I mean, he's. So which ones of uh, who doesn't get? Oh, so Joseph himself doesn't get his own tribe, right? right. Yeah. And who else wouldn't get one, or is that it? They just needed to. So there's get... so so um. Are there are only eleven sons of Jacob. Okay, that's what I thought, but then who, which two would be removed? Benjamin sometimes is thought is not existing. Oh, ben- Benjamin hasn't. Um, he does, but he's not always mentioned. So, allocated the land among the twelve tribes. This is huge, by the way, for my own biblical study, you, sure. us talking about this. Yeah. That probably. Whoop. 
It might be homework, but that's a huge start. So, so there's a a map, and I'm gonna put it over here too, so that people can see it. But there's the tribes. So we have Judah, Simeon, Dan, Ephraim, Gad, Reuben, Manasseh, Issachar, Zebulun, Naphtali, and Asher. That's the map. I'm only counting ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm counting eleven, but I might just be a bad counter. I am. This is why I don't work with money. <laughs> okay, so the sons are this. They are, are Reuben, Oh, Simeon, I found them. Okay. Yep, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Those are the 12. Okay. Levi is not a tribe. They become Right. The, they are the, the, um, the, the priests. The priests. And Joseph's not a tribe. And Joseph so is not a tribe. So those two get replaced by Ephraim and Manasseh. Yes. And Manasseh, oddly enough, besides Judah, probably ties for or is the biggest tribe. Yeah, they if have you, by, by land mass. Yeah, because Simeon's within Judah, so he takes up a big bite of that. But uh, I do think that Ephraim, I do isn't the isn't the city of Bethel mentioned a lot, or the anti-Bethel mentioned Bethel. a lot in Hosea? Bethel was was mentioned, I think. Uh, yeah, Beth Avon, which I thought was uh, a play on Bethel, but the evil Bethel. Let me let me look at this really quick. I remember reading something. Uh, let me see. Oh, it's four four fifteen. Four, Our computer four fifteen. Yeah, it uh, talks about Beth, um, Beth Avon. Beth Avon. Uh, but I could have, I thought that was, it stands for house of wickedness, which I believe play because I think Bethel means house of bread, doesn't it? No, Beth am I thinking Bethlehem of something? means house of bread. Bethlehem means house of bread. Okay. All right. So Beth is, is house. So Bethel okay. is house of God. Okay. see here really quick house of nothingness house of idols place in the mountains of benjamin east of bethel um in hosea 4 15 5 8 and 10 to 5 it stands for bethel and it is so called because it was no longer a house of god but a house of idols okay i knew that okay cool so that makes a ton of sense now in terms of the tribe because ephraim contains bethel from what I'm seeing. And oddly enough, I didn't know this, but Jerusalem was in the house of Benjamin, the city of Jerusalem. That's cool. Uh, that's a really nifty map. Right? I mean, I should I should have known that, but I mean, I just didn't. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's good to see. And and I mean, we'll, we'll go back to that map because I think there's a lot to the, the Did you post it on the point. on the the thing? It's it's been up. <laughs> oh, cool. So the thing is, there are – I think it mentions Beth Haven, which is a wicked play on Bethel. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it mentions it no less than three times within the book. And so the place of Bethel uh, being <laughs> formerly the house of God and then of course being within the, the, the geographical area of the tribe of Ephraim, Ephraim sorry, uh, that makes a lot more sense for this book. Wouldn't you agree? Well, that that would be, I think, why um, Ephraim is mentioned so often, for sure. Yes. Because that's where the idol worship is. Um, yeah. Centered around. And and Bethel, if I believe, um, I'm right. I think that comes from when Jacob either wrestled the angel, it's, it's or close to it. What? It's Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder. Okay, cool. So I knew it had something to do with with that. So Bethel plays a huge uh, part in all the Old Testament. 
Um, but anyways, dude, okay. I like this. I'm learning a ton. <laughs> I'd kind of just given up on it, okay. um, understanding that. So, so in, in five, we have a lot more places. Yes. I was really into the places. So <laughs> Mizpah. Okay. Um, which is 5-1, right? Yep. I'm there. So the house, so the people, right? The priests, the the people, the house of Israel, and the house of the king, of mm -hmm. Judah. Uh, the judgment pertains to all of them. Everybody's getting judged. Mm -hmm. And there's been a snare at Mizpah and a net spread on on Tabor. Mm -hmm. So Mizpah is where Jacob and Laban had their agreement not to cross in anger. After okay. after Jacob wrestles, or before that, uh, after Jacob leaves, after stealing. Uh, Laban's household gods and everything. Yeah. Uh, Tabor is the mountain where Barak and Deborah had their thing in the Book of Judges. Okay. Uh, it's also the site of the Transfiguration. Ooh, cool. Yeah. Uh, Shittim, I don't know what that is. It's close to a bad word. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a place, but uh, <laughs> don't know anything about it. Uh, further down, Ephraim, 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 it's all really, really bad. But then in 8, we get Gibeah. And this is another yeah. big city that's going to happen in a couple of more times <clears throat> in the yeah. book. And it is uh, also from Judges, where it's, it's Judges 19. And it's it's much the same. It's it's the the certain Levite who comes from the hill country of Ephraim, travels to Bethlehem, picks up a concubine, travels back to Ephraim. Ooh, and is that the one where they cut into twelve pieces yeah, or something? And, and Ooh, the, that's the, a brutal the, story. The same the same thing happens in Gibeah that happens to Lot in Sodom, where the men of the town come and want to rape this guy. Yeah. Uh, and so they, they send the concubine out instead of him, and she gets abused and murdered yeah. uh, by their ravishing. And so he takes her body home and cuts it into 12 pieces and sends it to the 12 tribes, each piece to each tribe. And then yeah. all of Israel goes to war against Benjamin because of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Judges. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> human beings are just sickening. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't understand why God loves us, but he does. Uh, Another interesting thing is Saul reigned for 38 years from Gibeah. Saul reigned. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then Ramah so, is the other city, and that's where Samuel is from. Wow. Dude, you did a lot of research on this. I just, that's I just, crazy. <laughs> just Google searched all these names. Well, that's still <laughs> really cool. I didn't bother doing that. This is really helping me with my Bible study. Um, let's see. Any other ones? Um, now my next note is from chapter six. Cool. Yeah. Um, I, I, th I thought, uh, verse 15 was super interesting at the end of chapter five. I will depart and return to my place. It almost has that, uh, that, that illustration of where the Lord gives Ezekiel the vision of how he's leaving the temple. And he's going away mm -hmm. like um, I will carry them off. No one to rescue them. 15. I will depart and return to my place until they recognize their guilt and seek my face. They will search for me in their distress. And then, you know, uh, in that moment, it seems like the Lord uh, would come back. Right. So, so so I think that verse ties into the first part of six. And this is the yeah. intertestamental period for the for the nation mm -hmm. uh, between the the end of their prophecy and the coming of John the Baptist because six yeah. this first section of six is all about Jesus. See, I it depends here, uh, but I want to hear what you what your thoughts are because. Sure. I, uh, uh, so so they. Uh, for he he it is he who has torn and he will heal us. He is struck down. He will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us, and on the third day, I mean third day, it always makes me think of Jesus. He will raise us it up. It does. We may live before him. Yeah. 
let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. He's appearing as sure as the dawning. He will come to us like the showers, as spring rains water on the earth. <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah, that, that's, that's all Jesus. That seems messianic to me. It, it does, but um, I've been warned, and it says in my although resurrection of the dead is uh, witnessed to in many places uh, in the Old Testament, it should not be considered that uh, 6-2 is one of them. Um, it can be read as a resurrection, sh I'm sure, in the light of the Christ, but uh, as far as how anybody would read it who's reading it in that day and age, they wouldn't see it as one of the resurrection passages in the scriptures. So uh, just for clarification on that. Sure. Yeah, but I, th I'm, I think it's fair game for us to see his resurrection. Three is always an important number. Mm -hmm. um, uh, verse 6. I put an explanation, exclamation point by that. Uh, okay. For I desire loyalty and not sacrifice, knowledge of God rather than offerings. I feel like that is absolutely a refrain throughout the Old Testament. And yes, are, are burnt offerings good and commanded? Yes. Are they, um, is it something that uh, a good practicing Jew or Israelite does? Yes. Does God desire that more than obedience? 100% never. <laughs> um, but that was the main thing um, they mentioned Adam in verse 7 uh, I don't know you might want to look into another of the, the cities you got Shechem in there Shechem is, you... is the city that the brothers I don't remember which two uh, the, 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 the the Dinah the rape of Dinah the, oh. the, 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 the prince of the, the prince of Shechem um has his way with one of Jacob's daughters and the two brothers. Uh, then, the, oh. then, then the king of the town um, approaches Jacob to marry his son to the daughter that he raped. And so the two brothers say, if you're going to be part of our family, you all have to be circumcised. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> and then, well, and then in, murder, murder, murder. While they're in pain, they kill the whole yeah. family. Yeah. <laughs> and so because of and that. And I believe like, Judah was involved in that. I think Judah. It no, wasn't Judah? Be, because of that, the, the birthright passed over those two brothers and went to Judah. So, oh, so, so it was uh, Reuben, it was Reuben and... Reuben slept that, with his father's concubine, so it got passed over yeah. from him. So it was the next two. Gad and... or I don't know. I don't really know the order. Judah did something horrifying too, but I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, Probably rapey. Had to do with a prostitute. It's it's the whole uh, oh right the, the was, uh, seed on the ground thing is is part of that whole story. Yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah. Um and then at the end I have a ver I I just have they mention Egypt again when I return my people from captivity. Uh or wait, why did I say Egypt? Um I didn't mean to say Egypt. <laughs> um so. I was reading this right late last night. Maybe that's not a note I want to keep. <laughs> right. We're not pastors. We're allowed to be wrong. Uh, All right. Egypt definitely comes up later. Yeah, they do. Uh, chapter 7, something I thought was interesting, but they never consider that I remember all their evil. I think it's interesting that we... Uh, we so casually look past sins yeah and that yeah. we need to understand god loves us in spite of those things mm -hmm. and we don't know what that final judgment's going to look like but if it's done even remotely like we deserve there should be a lot of crying weeping and licking his boots <laughs> <laughs> yeah because uh, we we affront god to his face and then um, yeah, I think that's it. We we don't we don't we do sins and we don't notice. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna get up there and be realizing that was uh, we were doing a lot more than we thought. Mm -hmm. uh, something I've been I've been studying anger, and so uh, it's just another uh, negative use of the the word the term. But uh, in verse six, it talks about anger smoldering all night. Uh, for they, their hearts like an oven, draw him into their oven. Anger smolders. So. Um, they are kindled I, like an oven. Their heart burns within yeah. them all night. Their anger smolders. 
yeah. in the morning it blazes like a flaming fire. So that yeah. that reminds me of of what is the uh, don't let the sun descend on your anger. That's in Ephesians, I yeah. believe. Ephesians four. Right. So it, it's it's yeah. gonna if you let it if you let it smolder, it's going to explode. Right, and they've already disobeyed that command from Ephesians. It applies to yeah. all people, past and present. They, they, they. It's already smoldering well past into the night, and mm-hmm. and it, in you know, anger happens, but it usually causes us to sin. Yeah, yeah. Um. And I love verse thirteen. Though I want to redeem them. I just love these these little glimpses into the heart of the Lord. Lies in your heart. Do not cry yeah. from the heart, but wail. <laughs> Though I want to redeem them, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and sixteen, they turn, uh, but not to what is above. I, <laughs> I just love that. Right. Our, uh, we are so damn stubborn. <laughs> yes, that that's so. for darn sure. <laughs> um, um, what else? Then please. Uh, eight. Uh, starting in eight, I kind of found uh, I, I underlined animals because I uh, my wife thinks animals are cute, and um, I made the note about the eagle comes against the house of the Lord. Uh, Israel has rejected what is good, and enemy will pursue them, and I think that speaks back to the eagle. Uh, and that's kind of a cool, cool thought in in verse three, speaking back to verse one, and then Wait, four. The they have ins- say what? Oh, in verse one of chapter eight. Oh, I have a vulture. Oh, a vulture. Yeah. Oh, interesting. And the, the wow. Note, the note says the meaning of the Hebrew is uncertain. Okay. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe it's just a, a choice yeah, the it, it, the editors made. According to the dictionary, it could be eagle or vulture. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, um. So one like a vulture is over the house of the Lord because they have broken my covenant and transgressed my law. And I, I think it works with what you were saying, right? The the uh, the enemy shall pursue them like this this hovering menace is is over the house of Israel and is going to pursue them because they they spurn the good and and transgress right. the law. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, have you ever read any of the uh, one of my eighth friends is. Is recommending I read a Bart Ehrman book. Have you ever read a Bart Ehrman? Uh, there's there's a lot about Bart Ehrman. He's oh my gosh, he's written a lot of books, and a lot of people I think use him as toilet paper. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> there, there's a yeah, it was a long time ago, and I know you don't really like issues etc. very much. Um, oh, I okay with them when they, they say good crap. They they did a they did a, a from the horse's mouth interview with Ehrman. So Todd interviewed Bart Ehrman. That's awesome. And then and then. The next week or whatever, they brought in Montgomery, John Warwick Montgomery, to analyze yes! to analyze <laughs> that yeah. interview. Um, so you, you should be able to find it on their website and, and look that. Oh up. my gosh, I'm looking that up. Yeah, and and they they tear him apart. It's, <laughs> yeah, M- Montgomery has so much to say about how uh, oh. ignorant Bart Ehrman is about things. Dude, Montgomery <laughs> is my hero. A One guy. of my heroes, and the LCMS Lutheran Church gets to say that they own them. That's uh, own him. That's really the thing. Uh, in fact, John Warwick Montgomery. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but he is mentioned in the same breath with influential 20th century apologists. He's mentioned in the same breath with C.S. Lewis. Yeah, he he heads the internationally International Academy of Apologetics. Yeah, and, it's just I want to go to so that cool. someday. I just don't. And. Know. Uh, and uh, Rod Rosenblatt, I actually got to learn under him for a mm-hmm. One of my CDs here uh, is I'm, I'm doing a study right now on evangelism and uh, apologetics right here. Yeah. So cool. I still have these from 10 years ago. <laughs> and uh, Rod, if you're ever listening, I could use another set. So just <laughs> FYI. Stuff's good. Yeah. That's actually what we're doing our apologetics course on right now. It's, it's based cool. exactly on his work uh, and Montgomery's work. So. So that that would be a good a good resource for you, dude. I'm on it. Well, <laughs> in my stubbornness, I can miss some good things. So praise God for issues, etc. Yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, where are we at? We're verse four. Eight, right? What? We're still yeah, we're on ver- chapter eight. Okay. What were some of your notes on it? You said your next uh, notes were here. No, well, where is my next? I stopped making notes and just started underlining. My next notes are in chapter nine. 
Oh, okay. Mine, I have a couple more in eight. <laughs> they have installed kings, but not through me. I just love this. Uh, the the obstinance of Israel. They have appointed leader, leaders, but without my approval. And this probably speaks back to chapter one, where Hosea doesn't mention all the kings that say, oh, second kings mentions as mm -hmm. all being kings, um, because he does not recognize them. And so, yeah, there's, uh, there's a couple of kings, I think, that are missing at least one uh, that is missing. And I think it's because he doesn't recognize them or it might be another prophet that doesn't recognize them. Uh, but either way, there are prophets that pick and choose which Kings they choose to choose to uh, put in the line there. And that would explain a lot of it is that God doesn't recognize some of the Kings that have been installed. Like say, yeah. um, you know, there were ones that were installed by Babylon and stuff like that. Right. So, yeah. Um, and then, uh, I just love verse six for this thing is from Israel. A craftsman made it. It is not right. God. Yeah. <laughs> just in case God needs I, to I, tell you that. I don't remember which king it was who set up his, the calf in Samaria, but Samaria was the capital of Israel. Yeah. Uh-huh. And yeah, it's not from God. It's going to be broken into pieces with calf. <laughs> so and then to the wind. <laughs> I have just one more note is uh -huh. verse 12. Though I were to write out for him 10,000 points of my law, they would be regarded <laughs> as something alien. That's funny. Yep. Yeah. Regarded um, as a strange thing. Just it's so so the the willful ignorance of people makes the scriptures unintelligible. Yeah. Yeah. The railing, the defiance, the hatred of God. Mm -hmm. You know, those things we bring to our salvation. So they, they return to Egypt. They return to their bondage. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's where he talks about it. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. It's really funny that that comes full circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they fly to Egypt yep. for alliance. Yeah, so you're on chapter 9. Yep, I'm on chapter 9. Uh, this is also Egypt and Assyria. Uh, they, they eat the unclean foods. Um, this is where it, it seemed to me, and it, it's probably also back... But he's he's talking about people groups by their cities, right? So Ephraim mm -hmm. is a tribe, but uh, it says in chapter six that Memphis shall bury them. Egypt gathers them. Memphis shall bury them. Memphis is a city mm -hmm. of Egypt. Um, more Ephraim, Ephraim, Ephraim. Then we get to Gilgal uh, on chapter fifteen. Now I was just stuck on the on the cities. Oh, oh, in, <laughs> in chapter eleven. Um, had this that that Ephraim's glory shall fly away like a bird. No birth, no pregnancy, no conception. If they bring yes. children, I will bereave them until no one is left. So <laughs> I think an, an indication, and this this goes for today, I think as well that societies that reject God and, and willfully have this ignorance of God, He's going to take away their children. So yeah. like the Western world is having a massive fertility problem right now. Not only that, we're killing our own kids. Right. So yeah, we don't even realize it. We're fulfilling this prophecy by you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, think, I think this is this is very indicative of the 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 temporal punishments that I was talking about last time. Is is God still does things to societies that ignore Him? Oh my um, goodness! You know what's yeah. sorry. No, you're good. Go on. Go oh, ahead. I just think that's hysterical as we, you know, we're constantly fighting today as saying, like, look, we're going to look in the future and say that this abortion practice is just something that should have happened years ago and we need to be more enlightened about it today. And we look back at these old practices where people sacrifice children on the altars of false gods and say, how effing barbaric. Right. There's almost – a hundred percent chance as we have a an, either a, a reformation and an, a new enlightenment of theology or some sort of revival where we're going to come back again and say, holy F word, they did that to kids. Yeah. They chopped yeah. them up in utero and they pulled yeah. them out via their guts and their head. In, You're kidding me, in, right? In another 2,000 years, people will be talking about us the way we talk of, of all worship. Yeah. 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 And sure. uh, shame on us. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, it's 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 hideous. Yeah, uh, and uh, I hope that happens. I really do, because mm -hmm. f us, man. I did. We're so brutal. Uh, I've been doing some reading on history, 
uh, and, and even through some fiction writers, they, they can't even make up how brutal the Middle Ages were. How people just <laughs> murdered, raped, and destroyed each other for literal fun. Mm -hmm. Just arrows through the face, arrows through the throat, just pillaging and taking anything they wanted. Lawlessness at its, at its uh, most corrupt. And yet, the scale at which we do it is a hundred times worse. Yeah. It's ridiculous. We're, once again, the fact that God loves us, if you can ever make God the enemy in the Old Testament and completely blot out how bloody awful we are, mm -hmm. I, I just, oh my goodness, the, the words I want to say to you are just obscene. <laughs> <laughs> um, God is not the villain in our scripture. No, no, not even but people but put him in that right, role, and, and it's it's a, it's a bad assumption is, uh, on on our part. We we read into ourselves the goodness of 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 God, right? That's 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 the first commandment, and we break it all the time. We we want to be God. Yeah, yeah. you know, every every time you you stub your toe and curse. It's, it's, affront to the lord yeah it's it's because you want to be god right you yeah the world should bend to your will uh, <laughs> uh damn that chair yeah exactly damn. That, that chair should go to hell because it hurt my foot <laughs> yeah that's, that's that's what it is um, it's, i really started slowing down around this area mm -hmm. how about you uh yeah, but i've got 10, some notes in 10, 11 10 11 12 um, this, I had some more interesting. Uh, oh, do it. Fifteen is Gilgal. All right. So there was there was one other Gilgal Kay. showed up somewhere. Where did it? It was earlier. Uh, I don't know. Um, no, Gibeah. Okay. Right. Gibeah. Yeah, Gibeah is so. So if you look at the map again, Gibeah is this. Area. We already did Gibeah. Did we? Yeah, Judges 19 and Saul's reign, no, where Saul reigned. It, oh, did we? That's it. Yeah. yeah. What, what was the uh, – oh, where was it? Anyway, so Gilgal, if you look Gilgal. at the map, is here. It's oh, right, 15. It's yeah. right near Jericho. It's right north of Jericho. Okay. And that is the first place where the Israelites made camp after they were allowed to cross into Canaan for their conquest. Oh. So every evil of theirs began at Gilgal. So wow. the the sin of Israel started the instant they came back to the land after their, their – so, so they have their 40 years of wandering in the desert, right? So that, that is, is taken care of. That whole generation is dead, and then this generation enters the, the land and begins sinning. Um, <laughs> and it's, yep. it's probably because they weren't willing to kill everyone that he told them to kill. Oh, that's 100 percent the reason. Yeah. And that's the thing. Uh, we can't sugarcoat that. It is a hundred percent the reason their mm -hmm. sins occurred, and God even warns them that this will happen. Yeah. Like uh, he's so not without Gilgal. reason. Uh, not that they wouldn't have stopped sinning anyway, and not that they never. You know, it's at some point the Lord had to know where, it, like, you're not gonna kill everybody. Yeah. So, and we know already that he wouldn't have anyway because. Uh, uh, literally, who survived? Uh, the the prostitute. Mm -hmm. uh, Rahab. Yeah, she was. Yeah, Rahab. She was always gonna make it. Yep, yep. They made a deal with her. So now you wonder: Was that deal got part of God's plan, or was that man's working? There was there was another region in here that I had found, but it was it was this. Reuben Gad Manasseh was I thought it was before this mention of Gilgal, but I don't I can't find it now. Um, well, we have Tyre mentioned. No, that wasn't it. But it was it was it, uh, what I'll get at is is I felt like Hosea was pushing us historically through the the conquest of, of Israel region by region. So we had this this wow. Manasseh Gad Reuben. That was where they went yeah. first and they they claimed this land. For their tribes, and then they went to Gilgal and took out Jericho, and then they spread throughout the land. Yeah. Um, right. Dude, that would be really cool. So I, th I think that's kind of what he was doing 
in here. Bob here. I just can't find it now. Oh well, that's fine. <clears throat> uh, I, I put lines around 10, uh, 12. 10, 12? Yeah, and the okay. first part. So, so Judah so must righteousness. come out. Let me get there in here. Doo -doo -doo. Ten, eleven. Uh, Judah must plow. Jacob must harrow for himself. Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap steadfast land. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. Let's tear up your fallow ground. Stop, stop all this nonsense. So that uh, stop being the hard path that the the seeds fall on and don't get to do anything because your mm. your ground is so hard, your hearts are so hard. Um, that's um, eleven. That's all I had in eleven. I didn't have any else for eleven. Wasn't out of Egypt I called my son. Uh, does that is that what yours reads in eleven one? Out of Egypt I called my son. Uh, that's how it's worded in my version. Yeah. When when Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt, I yeah. called my son. I feel like that's a famous phrase. I, I haven't heard it. No, <laughs> maybe not. Okay, that's fine. I just I feel like I've heard it before. Maybe I heard it while I was reading. Uh, and then verse nine, I have pointed out, I will not vent the full fury of my anger. It's interesting. Uh, he's not going to even give him his full fury. He's like just backhand him a little bit. Uh, I will not turn back to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One among you. I will not come in rage. Um, or the version below, it says, or uh, the footnote below, or come into any city. Uh, Hebrew is obscure. Nine. So it's uh, it's it has yeah. a little bit of the characteristic of God right there. Right. It's very and, interesting. And verse 8 is, is also good. How can I give you up? How can I hand you over? Right? How can I make you? I don't know what these two places are. Adama and Zeboiim. Maybe. Yeah. But I've had know, a change of heart. My heart recoils within me, and my compassion grows warm and tender. Uh, so, as much as as sin is destructive and and hateful to God, he he's his mercy is so much that he he can't totally destroy us. You know. I think people would say God has battered wife syndrome. <laughs> when they like, like seriously, so if you're actually reading this from the heavenly point of view, if you're from God's point of view, what kind of crazy lunatic is God to keep coming back to the? Per we would call that right. abuse these days. Yeah, and it, and, uh, and yeah, it, and and that's the. This, we this always is... instruct women to leave their abusers. Mm -hmm. It's a hundred percent these days. Mm -hmm. And and this is the point of Hosea. Mm -hmm. Is you, you have this picture in the first part of just a, a horrible marriage mm -hmm. with with just just abandonment completely and and adultery and and all yeah. kinds of awful and yeah and we, we gotta we would, remember we would say God is neither male nor female sure I mean we're not we we always think about him in a male yeah probably masculinize him a little bit into thinking oh well if a guy returns to an abusive girl that's not even a thing right that like how can a girl abuse a man right. <laughs> Um, it can happen, but it's literally like a 90-10 split. It's like we just don't think that way. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about just endless patience, patience that humanity just can't come up with. Right. And I think it's it's either beautiful or it's insane. And I don't think a lot of people think about it that way, how, how jilted the Lord was as a lover and mm -hmm. how screwed over he was so many times. And yet, he is constantly pursuing, loving, yep. with unconditional love, the, the creature who just just shat in his Cheerios. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I'm sorry. I keep going off on that, but I think it's so important because we never come at this from the perspectives of the Lord. I don't even hear this in sermons these days is how, how awful – we treat the Lord. We always hear it from the Lord's point of view because of mighty. We assume these things of him that he cannot be aching and hurting. But the fact is, up, upon unfaithfulness, there is no entity known that can hurt as bad as God for the unfaithfulness of his creatures to, to not want him. Mm -hmm. 
and yet he deals with it for literally almost like just an insane amount of time by our standards. Yeah. Depending on whether you think of time as a thing, you know, whatever. Uh, I for some reason um bracketed two through four. Uh, That's kind of long to read, but uh, it just recounts Jacob and his struggle with an angel and his favor he found at Bethel. Mountain, maintain love and justice and always put your hope in God is something I highlighted in verse 6 of chapter 12. 12. Okay. Um, Thank you for reading through it. What else did you find in those chapters? I I, I also um, saw the the angel prevailed part in 2 through 4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love and justice. Uh, in it, it's it's close to twelve. It's it's like the end of eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, where is that? Right. So Ephraim surrounded me with lies, and the house of Israel with deceit. But Judah still walked with God, and his face was like a bowl of lights. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. Judah is the line of of Jesus, mm-hmm. so so the line of Jesus stays faithful. God God protects uh, the the line of the Messiah. Yeah, a little longer in any case. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Um. That's all I had in twelve. Yeah, my I and then I don't have anything in thirteen and fourteen. Let's see. What did I put? <laughs> um. Oh, I have something. I, I I'll just read a couple things if you mm-hmm. uh, don't mind. I uh, in thirteen nine, I will destroy you, Israel. You will have no, you have no help but me. Uh, I love that the exclusive help of which comes from God, uh, the dependence upon Him alone. And then verse ten, now where now is your king that he may save you in all your cities right. and the rulers and you demanded, saying, "Give me a king and leaders." I give you a king in my anger and take away a king in my wrath. That's, that's, that, that's so, <laughs> so gorgeous. So God, like it, it, <laughs> it's it's definitely the the sarcastic God that we we see in Job, right? Where were you oh, at the beginning love it. of the universe? Yeah, praise God, Hit, He has that kind man. of sense of humor. <laughs> and then fourteen, I I wonder if this is where Jesus gets it. I believe Jesus. Oh, death, where's your victory? Oh, hell, where's your? St- yes, what is yes. that? Um, if he is gets it from here? 14, death, where are your barbs, Sheol, where is your sting? Yeah, for sure. I wonder if that's where he gets it from. Uh, oh, yeah. oh hell, where is your victory? Something like that. Uh, I, I don't, I don't have it. That's the Paris praise of, according to Tim. And then <laughs> 14, 2 through 3, say to him, forgive all of our sins and accept what is good so that we may repay you with praise from our lips Assyria will not save us we will not ride on horses we will no longer proclaim our gods to the work of our hands for the fatherless receives compassion in you um i always think uh issues of orphans and and the fatherless are always in, uh, something to at least consider mm-hmm. and then finally i i do the last uh verse and it's a it's a uh, indictment against myself Uh-oh. um let whoever is wise understand these things, and whoever is insightful recognize them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. And I just wrote by that, oops, because <laughs> <laughs> how often do we stumble on things of God's word? Like, I just walked right over those things that you talked about, all the cities that meant so much more sense now to my Bible reading. Uh-huh. I just went, nah, I don't have time for that. So, uh, and I was not insightful, and yeah, I was yeah. not bothering to understand the things of the Lord. I wasn't wise, and so um, I felt convicted. That horrible evangel- <laughs> evangelical word. Um, Funny. In in this, and so, you know, oops. Yeah. <laughs> good. How do you like feel that. about that? Was it profitable? I think so. Yeah. Cool. Took us an hour and fifteen minutes, mm-hmm. but we just okay. got through ten, 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 ten chapters. chapters. Yeah. Uh, uh, I wouldn't the, do the, more than that on any given week. Yeah, uh, the, 
the, ten chapters of anything. The, the beginning was a lot better than the end, for sure. Uh, yeah. But, you know, the the rest of these minor prophets are all little, so it shouldn't yeah. be too bad to, to smash a wound like that. Yeah. And, I mean, minor. even if we didn't get as much into commentary, you know, finding out the the verses and things that really are poignant to us, I think, are important. Um, man, sometimes we forget how applicable. You know, it's not that the Bible's about us. I never would say that the Bible is a story of God's salvation to man. But yeah, it's about Jesus. If, if yeah, it's about Jesus. But you know, it's it's okay, I think, to you know find things like verse nine of chapter four and say, "Oops, I suck." <laughs> like. God is talking to me there, and I and I suck yeah. in that way. That's acceptable. Yeah. I'm not gonna, you know, compare myself to the Messiah or anything. So, what do you want to do next week? Do you think Joel and Amos, or is Amos getting a little long? Amos is Tiny. almost ten chapters. Amos is ten chapters. Yeah, it's nine. I think at most we should probably try to ta tackle like 10 chapters a week. I mean, that's already doing terrible exegesis, so. <laughs> well, Joel is, is three chapters. Amos is. Yeah. Amos, why is Amos that long? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's, just, let's just stick one book at a time. So, so yeah. Joel, we'll do Joel next time. Yeah. And, and you did the, uh, the overview of uh, Host. So I'll do the overview of Joel next week. That's fair. And I just like the name Joel, so thank you hey, for letting me do that. I'm sure you are. You know, I was just scrolling through and I saw Virgin. That'll be good. <laughs> All right. What are that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, what's a Virgin? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna end it there. Thanks for watching, everybody who watched. If you watched, it'll be on YouTube tomorrow. Hopefully the sound will be better. Um, yeah. Good night. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi, Mom. That's fine. <laughs>